Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And good morning, God bless you, really good. As we say, peace to you and all yours, and peace to our beloved nation, Nigeria. Welcome to the first Sunday of May, 2020. The good Lord who saw us through the fearful month of April, <laughs> we by his grace see us through the seemingly scary month of May. And by the time the COVID-19 storm is finally over, I pray that you and I will still be standing in the mighty name of Jesus. Please do not live in denial whenever you are afraid. Instead, just do what David did in such a situation. Listen to David in Psalm 56, verses 3 and 4. David said, Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what can flesh do to me. So I say to you today, no matter what you are going through, learn to confront your fear with your faith based on the word of God. Because heaven and earth shall pass away, not a jot or a tittle, not an outer of his word shall pass unfulfilled. And God is faithful to keep his own promise. He had said, he that keeps Israel does not sleep nor slumber. He's keeping us. The sun will not smite you in the day, nor the moon at night. So no pestilence will come near your dwelling in the name of Jesus. It's okay to be afraid sometimes, but when you are afraid, put your trust in God. The Bible states in Isaiah chapter 3, verse number 10, listen to the word of God. Say to the righteous that it shall be well with them, <laughs> for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. I repeat that one more time. Say to the righteous that it shall be well with them. It may not look so now, but it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. So I say to you today, it is well with your spirit. It is well with your soul. It is well with your body. It is well with your marriage. It is well with your family. It is well with your business. It is well with your finances. In the mighty name of Jesus, it is well with you. There is a question agitating the minds of many people who, has re who have reached out to me in this past one week. And the question is, should the lockdown be relaxed? I would like to answer you uh, with all the grace of God upon my life. Left to me, my counsel to everyone will still be, stay indoors until these calamities are over. I perceive that the reason government wants to relax the lockdown is because they could not meet the demands of those who need palliative uh, things to be sent to them, or whatever their reason may be. You know, we don't have enough beds, we don't have enough isolation centers, we don't have enough of anything. But God who is more than enough will come through for us, and this season come through for you and for me, in the name of Jesus. I am planning by God's grace to stay indoors till at least the end of May. Because we have seen what had happened in other nations. And the, 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 the committee in charge of this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, they are already saying, hey, government should not relax. But I appeal to you by the message of God, if you have no business outside, especially our aged people, and that includes age 60 and above, Please stay indoors and be careful where you go when you go. I know definitely that among us are many people who are daily earners and who must go about their petty trade so that they do not die of hunger while staying at home. In this class, the class of those who are petty traders, and like any other class, the super rich, both rich and poor, there are two categories of people. They are the righteous, and the wicked. Please pay attention to the word of God and see in what circumstances Isaiah prophesied that it will be well with the righteous. He said, say to the righteous, it will be well with him. 
But what circumstances did they speak this out? Isaiah chapter 3 verse 1 to 9. Listen to Isaiah. This, this, this was the circumstances in their day that he spoke the word that said to the righteous, it shall be well with him. Verse 1. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, takes away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stock and the store, the whole supply of bread and the whole supply of water. Do you know what that really means? It simply means pandemic hunger was on the way. The stock, the store, bread, water, all taken away. It's been said on this platform, it's been said elsewhere, that there's a worldwide famine coming. What are you going to do when that famine hits the economy of this world? Listen to what will happen that day. The mighty man and the man of war. The judge and the prophet. Uh -huh. The diviner and the elder. The captain of 50 and the honorable man, the counselor and the skillful artisan, and the expert enchanter, the one who knows how to make incantations, all of them will be taken away. And he said, I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. I need to pay attention to that. I will give children to be their princes, <laughs> and babes shall rule over them. Listen to what it means. The word children there means boys. Boys. It could be area boys, it could be anyone. Boys. And babes in that verse of scripture means capricious ones. Capricious ones. Which simply means those who are fecal, those who are given to sudden and unaccountable changes of mood or behavior, as in capricious and brutal administration. I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. The people will be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child will be insolent toward the elder. How aggravating that can be. And the base, those who have no honor, the base toward the honorable. The lightly esteemed will be rude to the honorable. Then when a man takes hold of his brother in the house of his father, saying, you have clothing. He must be naked. You have clothing. You be our ruler. And let these ruins be under your power. They will be looking for where to hide and who to call. I'm sure you are getting all kinds of texts. Help, 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 help. This is what is happening in that day. In that day, the man who they approach will say, he will protest, say, I cannot cure your ills. For in my house is neither food nor clothing. Do not make me a ruler of the people. Can you imagine Nigerians rejecting Chief Tracy titles? <laughs> For Jerusalem stumbled and Judah is falling because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. The look on their countenance witnesses against them and they declare their sin as Sodom. They do not hide it. Woe to their soul, for they have brought evil upon themselves. It was in this circumstance that verse 10 now was spoken. Verse number 10, Isaiah 3.10, say to the righteous, look at the circumstances. God is saying, I'm making a difference between those who serve me and those who serve me not. When children are insolent, when people cannot take care of themselves, when bread is taken away and water is taken away, and where there's no food, inflation everywhere, economic depression, say to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. If anything is scary in this passage of Isaiah, the scary part of this prophecy is verse 11. Isaiah 54, I beg your pardon, Isaiah chapter 3, verse number 11. It says, Say to the wicked, Woe to the wicked! He shall be ill with him, for the rewards of his hand shall be given him. I told you there are two classes of people among those who will be going out, whether rich or poor. The two classes are not male or female. The two classes are not poor or rich. The two classes in this hour are the wicked and the righteous. Say to the righteous, it shall be well with him. It shall be given the fruit of his doing. But listen to this in verse 11. Woe to the wicked. It shall be ill with him, for the rewards of his hand shall be given him. 
Brothers and sisters, there's only one way out for the wicked person in this season and beyond. There's only one way out. Isaiah 55, verses 6 and 7. Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. The word of God is saying to the wicked, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Before they unlock you and realize the lockdown, please, I appeal to you, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way. Do not think it's business as usual. COVID-19 is real. The Lord is the only one who can protect us and preserve us. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. I'm adding to it now, not in an exaggerating manner before it is too late. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Why is he asking you to come? By the way, Isaiah 55 is God's invitation to live more abundantly. From verse 1, you will see that before verse 7, God gave an invitation for abundant life to all. To all, abundant life. The same thing Christ Jesus came to give. Isaiah 55, verse 1 to verse number 4. Listen to what the word of God says. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you will have no money. Come, buy and eat. You have no money. He's asking you to come. There's something God can do for you, even without money. You will have no money. Come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why? Somebody had paid for it. Christ paid for it. He became sin so that you might become the righteousness of God in him. And he became poor so that you in his poverty might become rich. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. And let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear. That's all God is asking for this morning. And come to me here and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David. Indeed, I've given him as a witness, is a prototype. God took him from obscurity and brought him into prominence. And indeed, I've given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. If you come and you answer this invitation and you come to God and turn to him, he says, surely you shall call a nation you do not know. And nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. That's the context that he now went into, the, the, the prophet went to verses 6 and 7, Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. He now says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Because he's calling, he's stretching out his hand, he's asking you to come. Don't go and die when the lockdown is relaxed. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man is thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. And he will have mercy on him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. Why? Why will God abundantly pardon? Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. Why will God abundantly pardon? Listen to the word of God. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some count slackness, that you have been getting away with your wickedness before now, does not mean you know, your, your judgment is not a time bomb. It, it's ticking. But God is long-suffering toward us. Why? Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I appeal to you by the mercies of God, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's Yoruba word that simply means he that has ears to hear, let him hear. Today, by the grace of God, we will continue with the third part of our current series, You Can Create Your Own Goshen. You can create your own Goshen. Father, the entrance of your world brings light and understanding to the simple. I thank you for the word of exhortation, encouragement, and warning that has gone forth. I pray that it will stand against no one 
Thank you for preserving your people. Thank you for protecting your people. And thank you for providing for them. And now, as I declare your word, I pray in Jesus' name that the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, and the hearts of your people will be acceptable in your sight. Thank you for inspiration. Thank you, O oh Lord, for illumination. And thank you for all that you will do today as people are inspired, illuminated, and they get delivered from everything oppressing them in Jesus' name. Amen. As I pointed out in earlier brokers, Goshen is a country within a country. And I'm saying you can create your own Goshen. <laughs> Goshen was a place of safety provided by God for the preservation and protection of his people from plagues and pestilence that afflict the ungodly. Genesis chapter 47 verse 27 makes it plain that Goshen was a country within a country. So Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the country of Goshen. Some, may, some a translation may say in the countryside, but here in New King James Version it says, in the country of Goshen. And they had possessions there and grew and multiplied exceedingly. May God help you today to locate your own Goshen where you will have possessions, where you will grow, and where you will multiply exceedingly. And furthermore, the significant difference between Goshen and Egypt became apparent in the time of severe famine in Egypt in the days of Joseph. Just as the world is about to hit a major economic recession that happened in the land of Egypt and all over the countries of the world when Joseph was in Egypt. Genesis chapter 47, verses 12 and 13. See the difference between Goshen and Egypt. Then Joseph provided his father, his brothers, and all his father's household with bread according to the number in their families. Please hold on. Listen again, Joseph provided his father, his brothers, and all his father's household with bread according to the number in their families. But contrast with Egypt, now there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very severe, so that the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan, where they were coming from before they settled in Goshen, languished because of the famine. May your household not languish in this season in the name of Jesus. The difference also became much more apparent in the days of Moses when plague after plague afflicted the land of Egypt just before the exodus of the children of Israel and none of those plagues took place in Goshen. I'll give you three examples as I've done in the past. First was swarm of flies. Flies represent demons in the Bible. Their prince and their king is called Belzebub, the prince of flies. Exodus chapter 8, verse 20 to 23. Exodus 8, 20 to 23. And the Lord said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh as he comes out to the water. Then say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. Or else if you not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and your servants, on your people, and into your houses. Can you imagine with all the mosquito netting, all the netting on the window, everything? They said, no, these flies, they are different flies. They will go through the wall. They can come through anywhere. You can lock your doors. They are coming in. They are demons. They will come on you and your servants. That is, they will really land on them. How many flies can you fight at the same time? On your people and into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground on which they stand. Ah, that's not carpet. And in that day, I will set apart the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, in order that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the land. I will make a difference between my people and your people. Tomorrow this sign shall be. As they unlock or they, 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 they relax, they lock down. In Jesus' name, no demon, no virus will afflict you. Tomorrow this sign will be. God will begin to make a difference between the wicked and the righteous. I pray the wicked will repent before it is too late. God made a difference. That day. That's the first significant thing that happened in the days of Moses. Exodus 10, 21 to 23, when there was utter darkness, in Egypt, and there was light in Goshen. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward heaven, 
that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness which may even be felt. I told you before, you could hold it like Damascus in your hand, like what? It could be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another. Wow. Did they run into one another then? <laughs> Can you imagine father and son going, wah, they knock their head. Now, did anyone rise from his place for three days? I told you people, if they had to wee, it was in the same spot. If they had to poo, it was in the same spot. And they could not get to the kitchen, so there was no food. <laughs> but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Now, let's go to Exodus chapter 12. This was when God gave the last sign, the, the last sign in Egypt. He said, for I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and we strike all the firstborn in the land, all at the same time. All the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Verse 13. Now that the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. This is why we have been taking communion. And there's another one this Friday by the grace of God. Where you will see five significant things you must hold on to throughout this period. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Did that happen? Verse 29. It really happened. Verse 29 to 33. And it came to pass at midnight. In the name of Jesus. No evil shall be for you in the midnight season. You will rise up and praise God. In the name of Jesus. At midnight hour. And it came to pass at midnight. That the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh. That was his hair apparent. He must have been raising him for some time now. But he was slaughtered, he was killed. Man, no more hair. He will have to look for another one. From the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the captive, who was in the dungeon, even someone in prison. And all the firstborn, even of livestock. God, I fear you. So Pharaoh rose in the night. He, all his servants, and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. Fear God, my friend. Then he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise, go out from among my people. Oh, this is the same person that said, Who is that God who will deliver you from me? Like Nebuchadnezzar. I don't know that God. It's because you have no business. That's why you spend your time going to church. That's why you say, Hey, fear God. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise, go out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as you have said. Also take your flocks, your herds, as you have said, and be gone and bless me also. Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, bless me also. And the Egyptians are the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we shall all be dead. May that not be your portion. May God put a difference in your life and may you become a difference maker also in Jesus' name. Here is the bottom line. Of all that happened that day. And on, based on that, what happened, this bottom line, I want to prophesy according to the grace given me, according to the proportion of my faith. Here's the bottom line. When God announced the death of the firstborn of all of Egypt, he also proclaimed the end of anyone ridiculing the children of Israel. That it will not happen anymore. That in the land of Egypt, they will wag their tongue against the children of Israel. Children of Israel, Exodus chapter 11, verse 1 to 7. And the Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. Afterward, he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will surely drive you out of here altogether. We saw that happen in Exodus 12. Speak now in the hearing of the people, and let every man ask from his neighbor, every woman from her neighbor, articles of silver and articles of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. Then Moses said, Thus says the Lord, About midnight I will go out into the midst of Egypt. The man of war will go by himself. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. 
from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the female servant, who is behind the handmill, and the firstborn of the animals. Then there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as was not like it before, nor shall be like it again. But against none of the children, underline that in your Bible, against none of the children of Israel shall a dog move its tongue, against man or against beast, that you may know that the Lord does make a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. What does this really mean? It means from this day forward, in the name of Jesus, nothing in your life will put you to shame. And no dog of your enemy shall wag their tongue against you in the mighty name of Jesus and against all that are yours because they could not even wag their tongue against the beast that belong to the children of Israel. No more dog ridiculing you in Jesus name. The word move here. If you look in the column of your Bible, no dog shall move his tongue. If you look in the column of your Bible, it simply means no dog shall sharpen his tongue against you. In the name of Jesus, from this day forward, no one shall sharpen his tongue against you. And any tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn by the way you live. I've seen people rise against me sometimes and say things that are not true. And when their judgment fall, I can only pray for them because they do not know that no dog is permitted to move his tongue against God's servant and against God's children. Isaiah 54, this is our heritage. This is our blessing that dogs are not allowed to move their tongue against us. Isaiah 54 verse 11. I always think this was written for my sake because I was born in November. 1954. Isaiah 54, 11. Oh, you afflicted one, tossed with tempest and not comforted. Behold, I will lay your stones with colorful gems and lay your foundations with sapphires. It's a new day. Solid foundation. I will make your pinnacles of rubies. You ain't seen nothing yet. We are becoming headquarters of wealth. I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of crystal, and all your worlds of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. Wow. Imagine God Almighty teaching your children by himself. Then they will not miss it. They will not miss it in marriage. They will not miss it in career. They will not miss it in business because the Lord is teaching them. There is no better teacher than the Holy Spirit. In righteousness you shall be established. CGCC members listening to me, this is our clarion call every time. You can win by righteousness. And when you are established in righteousness, you shall be far from oppression. For you shall not fear. And from terror of any kind, <laughs> it shall not come near you. Indeed, they shall surely assemble, but not because of me. Whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake. I've seen them fall left and right. Everyone who rises up, rises up against me. And you will see that and experience that in your life in the name of Jesus. Behold, I've created a blacksmith who blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work, and have created the spoiler to destroy. If God does not permit them, they cannot do anything. But look at where he has placed you. No weapon formed against you. The word formed there includes fashion. You know, not, they are not about to be manufactured. They are already in existence. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn by your very lifestyle of transparency, of accountability, of discipline. Every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Say to the righteous, he shall be well with him. Let's dig deeper at this stage into the history of Goshen. As I said in the previous parts, one and two of this message, this particular Goshen, Egypt, was first located by Joseph, and it was mentioned and allocated verbally to his brothers at their reunion service in Egypt. Pharaoh also gave his consent for the children of Israel to dwell in Goshen. I have a reason for going this way today again. I want to show you what really transpired. He told them, Pharaoh said to them, the best of the land was theirs. Genesis chapter 45, I begin to read from verse 4. Genesis 45 verse 4. And Joseph said to his brothers, please come near to me. So they came near. Then he said, 
I am Joseph, your brother whom you sold into Egypt. I could imagine them putting their hands on their head because his younger brother by the name of Benjamin did not know what transpired. This was the best kept secret in Canaan. They lied to their, to their father about the, 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 the disappearance of Joseph. But he now said to them, but now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. Woo! <laughs> For God sent me before you to preserve life. You only were transportation system for me. For these two years, the famine has been in the land, and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your life by a great deliverance. That was a man who understood the purpose of his suffering, why he went through what he went through, that there is no progress without process. So, it was, so now it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Hurry, go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me, not me myself, God has made me, not my wisdom, not my ability to interpret dreams and to bring blueprint out of those dreams. No, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen. This is the first time you find it in the entire Bible. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen. You shall be near. That's the meaning of Goshen, be near. Near, be near to me. You shall be near to me, you and your children, your children's children, your flocks and your herds and all that you have. There I will provide for you. <laughs> Lest you and your house, may God raise you up to such a level that you are able to suckle multitudes of people. There I will provide for you. Lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty, for there are still five years of famine. He did not repay their evil with evil. He overcame their evil with good. He supplied their needs. Behold, your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my mouth that speaks. To you. So you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and all that you have seen, and you shall hurry and bring my father down here. Give me verse 16. Pharaoh also heard. Now the report of it was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brothers have come. Now when this report was given to them, he did not send a word, my brothers who sold me into slavery. Nah, 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 nah. It's been edited. <laughs> Joseph's brothers have come. So he pleased Pharaoh and his servants well. Because if they have been presented as criminals, they would have been treated as one. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, say to your brothers, do this. Load your animals and depart. Go to the land of Canaan. Bring your father and your households and come to me. I will give you the best of the land of Egypt and you will eat the fat of the land. Now you are commanded, do this. This is a command. Take cats out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and your wives. Bring your father and come. Also do not be concerned about your goods. For the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. I do not know if you're thinking what I'm thinking, but I'll tell you what has happened to me. I thought for a while about how Joseph, a stranger in Egypt, could have located Goshen. And after I thought, I allowed the Holy Spirit to think through my thoughts so that he could speak through my vocal cord today. I came to the conclusion that Joseph perhaps located Goshen while he took a tour and carried out his state visit to each of the regions of Egypt in order to locate and build storage facilities in each region during the years of plenty. Mark my words, I'm going somewhere. He took a tour of the entire nation of Egypt and he built storage facilities in each region. Genesis chapter 41, verse 38. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as designing and wise as you. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. 
And Pharaoh said to Joseph, see, I have said to you, when you are not said, you'll be upset. I have said to you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand, and he clothed him in garments of fine linen. So, I saw and wonder, the prison garments had been taken off forever and ever, would never be remembered. The one that was stolen, coat of many colors, uh, of many colors that was deep in blood, forgotten forever and never. This is royalty. He clothed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. And he had him ride in the second chariot which he had. That's Air, Air Force 2. <laughs> and they cried out before him, bow the knee. So he sent him over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh also said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without your consent, no man may lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Sapna Penia. It means God lives and he speaks. May he speak through me and may he speak through you in this day and time and season in Jesus' name. And he gave him a wife as a wife, Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. So Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Joseph went out all the land of Egypt. Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all all the land of Egypt. I believe that was when he located Goshen. Now in the seven plentiful years, the ground brought forth abundantly. So he gathered up all the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities. Hold it there. He laid up the food in the cities. He laid up in every city. The food of the seeds of the fields which surrounded them. That is, he did not carry granite pyramid from, 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 from Sokoto or from Kaduna or from Kanu and move them to Igbo land. He did not carry oil and pipe them to, 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 to Sokoto. He did not carry cocoa and send it to Calabar. He laid up in every city the food of the fields which surrounded them. For those who care to listen to the hills and cries, of those who have been clamoring and asking for restructuring. There you have it in the word of God in black and white. There you see it. In every city, he built the storage facilities near the city. And when the crisis came, when the famine hit, he practiced what you call through federalism, that used to be in operation, that was in operation before the military interregnum in Nigeria. Here is a validation of the essential practice of true federalism. Genesis 41, verse 53 to 56. Each region definitely benefited from the storage facilities located in its territory. Then the seven years of plenty which were in the land of Egypt ended. And the seven years of farming began to come, as Joseph had said. The famine was in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt, there was bread. So when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. Then Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, go to Joseph, whatever he says to you, do. The famine was over all the face of the earth, and Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians. And the famine became severe in the land of Egypt. Can you see what he did there? He opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians. We have already been told that he built storage facilities in each city. From the fields of that city, he will build a storage facility and he will keep it there. He will go to another place, he will build a storage facility. From the fields, he will store it there. So when crisis hit, People were not going from the north to the south and from the east to the west. Each region benefited from the resources of its own city and its own region. A word is enough for the wise. Someone may ask, were there no people living in Goshen before the children of Israel settled in Egypt? Or was Goshen a bare land not occupied at all? My honest answer is twofold. And I want you to please listen to me attentively. Number one, it is possible Goshen was a reserved land or forest area referred to as a land of Ramses or supply cities. <laughs> 
when he was building these supply cities, <coughs> he already had in mind a place called Goshen. He had seen it. He had seen the landscape. So it's possible Goshen was a reserve land or forest area referred to as the land of the Ramses or supply cities and could only be allocated by Pharaoh or his designated authority such as Joseph. Genesis chapter 47 verse 1 to 6. Then Joseph went and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brothers, their flocks and their herds, and all that they possess have come from the land of Canaan. And indeed, they are in the land of Goshen. He had authority to assign them there. And he took five men from among his brothers and presented them to Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh said to his brothers, What is your occupation? And they said to Pharaoh, Your servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. And they said to Pharaoh, we have come to dwell in the land because your servants have no pasture for their flocks. For the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. Now, therefore, please let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. Then Pharaoh spoke to Joseph, saying, your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt is before you. Have your father and brothers dwell in the best of the land. Let them dwell in the land of Goshen. And if you know any competent men among them, then make them chief herdsmen over my livestock. Verse 11, verses 11 and 12. And Joseph situated his father and his brothers and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded, underline Ramses, I will go and show you why Ramses. Not only did he provide for them, Exodus chapter 1, verse 8 to 11 will show you the land of Ramses, what land, land was reserved for. Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them. Let them multiply. And it happened in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us and so go up out of the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens and they built for Pharaoh supply cities, Python and Ramses. That's why I say you should underline it. They were supply cities. They were special places. And J Joseph allocated that to his own brothers. A second reason why you, I mean, what do we know about this Goshen? Was it just a reserve land? Goshen could also have been occupied previously by the Egyptians who were moved out of there to the not so developed areas because of their economic hardships. <laughs> this is the difference even until now between the high density areas of the poor and the low density areas of the rich and the affluent. Genesis chapter 47, verse 20 to 22. You are going to find out why you live where you live. It's because of your purchasing power. It's because of your economic resources. Then Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. For every man of the Egyptians sold his field because the famine was severe upon them. So the land became Pharaoh's. And as for the people, he moved them into the cities from one end of the borders of Egypt to the other end. Only the land of the priests he did not buy. For the priests had rations allotted to them by Pharaoh, and they had their rations which Pharaoh gave them. Therefore, they did not sell their lands. Wow, a serious point of prayer there. Aren't you glad that Christ has made all believers kings and priests to himself, and we shall reign on the earth? So even in the midst of a severe global famine, Pharaoh took care of his priests. God will also take care of his own. In the coming famine, in the name of Jesus, Romans 5, 17, through the gift of righteousness, we shall reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Revelation 1, 4 to 6, he has made us kings and priests unto our God. And in 5, Revelation 5, 8 to 10, we shall reign on the earth in the mighty name of Jesus. At this juncture, let me go straight into other things I jumped the last time. I mentioned six out of all the knots and bolts of Goshen to you. And um, I want to add the remaining four today that were not mentioned earlier in parts one and two. For those joining us for the first time today, 
please place an order for parts one and two from our tape ministry, or you can go to YouTube and watch it free. The A is point seven. It's critical, it's important. In the midst of any setback or trial, please do not pray for the death of those who betray you or those who tell lies against you or carry ugly rumors about you. Please don't pray for them to die. If they die, you will not experience or enjoy one of the benefits that God delights in to bless his people. He delights to bless his people with this particular blessing. In Psalm 23, verse number 5, he says, You have set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. So instead of praying for your enemies to fall down and die, let God check you through process so that your progress can be clearly evident to all as it did for Joseph. Then those who lied against you, we have no choice but to tell the truth about you. Now listen to the brothers of Joseph when they were telling the truth of what had happened to him. Genesis chapter 37 verse 31 to 35. So they took Joseph's tunic, killed a kid of the goat, and dipped the tunic in the blood. Then they sent the tunic of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, we have found this. Do you know whether it is your son's tunic or not? And he recognized it and said, it is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him. Without doubt, Joseph is turned to pieces. Oh, then Jacob tore his clothes, put sackcloth on his waist, and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters, miserable comforters, the sons, and all his sons and all his daughters arose to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I shall go down into the grave to my son in money. Thus his father wept for him. <laughs> Oh, my God. The next point, point number eight, is a faith booster for me. Whenever you cannot trace God, please just trust him. I'm coming back to how they told the truth about him. I'm appealing to you. When you cannot trace God, please trust him. Only God is omniscient. You and I are not. So when bad things happen to good people, you must learn to cast all your burdens upon Jesus and leave the burden with him because he cares for you. We are the ten sons of Joseph lied about their brother and caused their father to conclude with their auto suggestion that Joseph had been torn by a wild beast when he saw Joseph's coat of many colors dipped in blood and sent to him by these ten rascals. <laughs> when this blood stained package was delivered to Jacob, his emotions were manipulated. They caused him to tear his own garment. He wept profusely in agony for his son, not knowing that Joseph was alive and that God had another plan for Joseph. Genesis 37 verse 36. Now the Midianites had sold him in Egypt, sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. And what was happening to him in Genesis 39? He had favor. He had been taken down to Egypt Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph. He was a successful man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper. In his and do you know the rest of the story? I will not overflog it. When you cannot trace God, please trust him, knowing fully well that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. Do you know what happened eventually? Those who lied against him, when they found out he was governor over Egypt, they came back and said, Joseph is alive and he is governor over Egypt. May those who lie against you and who carry ugly rumors against you that are not true, be alive on the day of your honor so that they can see how God makes a difference between the righteous and the wicked. If there's anything that really blessed me, here's another prophetic word for you today, especially those of you who have spent a long time grieving for your loved ones, for shattered dreams, and for lost opportunities. The God I serve is a restorer. He will restore your wasted years. He made that happen for Jacob and Joseph. You know why? Genesis 37 shows us that Joseph was 17 years old when he left home. 
His father sent him on an errand. His brother sold him. He was 17. And God preserved his life until he brought his father to Egypt. And guess how many years they both enjoyed father-son relationship in the midst of plenty and wonderful life together. God gave both of them, father and son, another 17 years. Genesis 47, 27 and 28. Genesis 47, 27 and 28. So Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the country of Goshen, and they had possessions there and grew and multiplied exceedingly. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. So the length of Jacob's life was 147 years. May God Almighty restore whatever you have lost during this lockdown to you in Jesus' name. Point number nine. On arrival in Egypt, it was Judah who showed the rest of the family the very location of Egypt. Genesis 46, 27 and 28. And the sons of Joseph who were born to him in Egypt were two persons. All the persons of the house of Jacob who went to Egypt were 70. Then he sent Judah before him to Joseph to point out before him the way to Goshen. And they came to the land of Goshen. It was Judah who pointed the way. Even in the promised land when there was another Goshen, in the book of Joshua, chapter 10, verse 40 to 42, in Goshen, 10, 40 to 42, so Joshua conquered all the land, the mountain country, the south, the lowland, and the wilderness slopes, and all their kings he left none remaining, but utterly destroyed all that breathed as the Lord God of Israel had commanded. And Joshua conquered them from Kadesh Benia, as far as Gaza, and all the country of Goshen, even as far as Gibeon. And the, all these kings and their land Joshua took at one time, because the Lord God of Israel fought for Israel. Who was this land given to at last? Joshua 15 verse 20. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Judah, according to their families. Verse 51 will show you who Goshen was allocated to. Goshen, Holon, and Gilo, 11 cities with their villages. It was again given to Judah. Well, it will appear that Judah has an eye and a nose for Goshen. Judah means praise. Be it known to you, therefore, that it takes the praise of Jehovah in addition to his creative words in your mouth to locate or to create your own Goshen. Begin to praise God. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise and see what he will do for you in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic and beyond in the name of Jesus. Finally, point number 10. Remember the word Goshen means draw near. James the Apostle points out this in his epistle, to whom we must really draw near. James chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. James 4, 7 and 8. Therefore submit to God, receive the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near. That's Goshen. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Today, in the name of Jesus, brothers and sisters, by the help of the Holy Spirit, I pray the Father that you begin to praise him as you draw near to him. And in Jesus' mighty name, no plague will come near your dwelling. No COVID-19 will come near your children. In Jesus' mighty name, your household, your environment, your neighborhood will become Goshen in the midst of Egypt as you praise God and as you draw near to him. I want to encourage you that in order to experience the best in life, you must become a doer of his word and, and, and one who praise God all the time. James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25. James 1, 22 to 25. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, the word of grace, the word of grace from Genesis to Revelation, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, the word must become work for you. 
You hear the word, you do it, you are indeed a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. Whatsoever you lay your hands upon, we prosper. That is where we are going to stop this Sunday. And by God's grace, next week, Sunday, I will show you how you can use your imagination to create your own Goshen. Thanks so much for listening to me today. Stay safe in your own Goshen. God bless you really good. Remember me in your prayers also because I'm praying for you. None of us will fall down and die in the midst of COVID-19. We will stand, we will rise and praise the name of God. In the tabernacle of the righteous, there will be voice of melody and voice of rejoicing. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. See you on Wednesday. Shalom.